Welcome back to the Endless Summer Shirt Sew Along video series. This is part two in the series where we're actually going to do the sewing alonging part. In part one, I walked you through every step about how I chose my size, how I prepped my pattern, and how I got everything cut out. And now we get to do the fun part and actually sew it together. So let's start on the first step in the instruction booklet. The first step is going to be marking the pivot points for where we're turning our corners at the base of the yoke. So for the back panel, that's going to be this inner corner here, and we're going to mark our stitch line pretty much, but we only need it in that corner. We don't need it in the whole garment. Our seam allowance is one half of an inch. From this straight edge, you want to measure over a half an inch. and mark your line. Here I'm using one of these friction pins that's super nice because it erases with a steam iron and you can get a super accurate line, but there's plenty of uh, disappearing marking tools that you'll wanna use for this. So I've measured a half an inch on this side and now a half an inch from this side and with those two marks I now have found my exact corner where I'm going to be turning my corner for sewing my yoke. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. For the front panel, you want to mark this corner and this corner. Once you've finished marking your front and back panels, you can now mark your actual yokes. One of these yokes is going to be on the inside and one is going to be on the outside. And if you maybe have one that's sort of a contrasting detail that you want to be on the inside, this is sort of nice because what we're going to do is we're going to mark these. They're going to be marked differently. So it'll help you kind of keep track if there's like one specific yoke piece that you want to be on the outside. Um, like see right here, this yoke piece for mine, see how the design is a little crooked right here, but then the design is a bit, well, it's a little crooked here too, but it's, it looks better here. So I think I'm going to make <laughs> this one be the one that's on the outside. For, so for the yoke that you want on the outside, you're going to be marking on the wrong side of the fabric. Again, you're going to just be marking every single corner here. For the yoke that's going to be on the inside, you are going to mark on the right side of the fabric. Now that we've finished with all our marking, we can begin with our pleating. Starting at center back, we're going to go over to our very first notch and you're gonna pinch this notch and then bring it over to meet the next notch. And pleating is not too complicated, but you do wanna kinda of make sure that your folds are staying perpendicular to this top edge here. And then put, I put two pins in for this first one since this first pleat is a little bit larger and then all the rest are gonna be the same size and they're gonna be a little smaller. So now we take the next pleat and bring it over to match. And we'll keep going in this manner till we get eight new pleats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each of these pleats, these seven pleats here should all be the same size. And then this one at the center back is the biggest. 
So if you accidentally notice that one of these seems a lot larger, that might be a sign that you've accidentally skipped a notch. It also might be helpful for you to put your pattern behind here and kind of double check as you go. Usually the first time you get a little twisted and then you get in the hang of things. So all of these pleats are folded towards the side seam that way. And then now for the other side, we're gonna fold them in the opposite direction. So again, we're gonna start with this first pleat nearest the center back and bring it to the next pleat. Another option too can be that if you're have, having trouble seeing your notches, you can use your marking tool to kind of highlight them just to make it that much easier for you to see what you're doing. These two larger notches in the center should turn out where you end up with this one giant pleat at the center back where the folds meet exactly at center. Um, so hopefully yours me meets up like that. Once you're done, you should have 16 new pleats. Set this aside and then we'll put the pleating on the front two panels. This is center front and this is the side seam. So we're gonna have our pleats folded towards the side seam. And again, this first pleat is a little bit bigger than all of the remaining pleats. These pleats are also a little bit larger than the back pleats. So again, you just wanna make sure that your raw edges are staying lined up here and that you're staying mostly perpendicular to your raw edge with your fold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is now center front, so our pleats are gonna be folded in the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that all the pleating is done, we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and base these pleats down so that we can take all the pins out. So I'm gonna sew it about 3 eighths of an inch. This is also a good time to kind of true up if this edge, like see here how this is not quite perfectly aligned. I can start sewing and when I get to that, maybe I can just adjust that little bit, a little bit. And now to sew down the back pleats. If you wanna add a tag, now is a good time to do so at center back at the base of the yoke. So now I'm gonna sew the top of both of the shoulder seams connecting the front and back panels. If you wanna do a French seam here, remember start with wrong sides together to do that process. For today, I'm just gonna sew this at a half an inch and then finish the raw edge with a serge. Now that this seam is stitched, 
surged and pressed open, we're going to do two rows of gathering stitches between the two notches going from the back panel to the front panel. So my two notches are right here. I'm going to turn my stitch length to the longest stitch it can do and then make sure I have some nice long tails of thread for starting out. So here's the first notch. I'll sew this at about a quarter inch. All the way to the second notch. Damn it. And then I'll pull this out and make sure to leave my tails long and do a second row right next to the first one. And then the same thing on the other side. So these basting stitches are going from the back panel to the front panel across this shoulder seam. And when you're done with that, make sure to switch your stitch length back over to your normal stitch. We're not going to worry about gathering the basting stitches just yet. We'll get to that when the time comes. We're now going to start attaching our yoke to our panels. This is the outer yoke because it's marked on the wrong side. So this is going to go right sides together with the outside of the back panel. And then the inner yoke is going to go right side to wrong side on the inside of the garment. I find it really helpful the whole time that we work on this yoke to kind of always be working where you're looking at the right side of the body of the garment just to help keep yourself from not getting too confused or flipped around. So we've got center back marked at the bottom of both of these yokes as well as our back panel. So the first thing we're going to do is pin these three layers together at center back. Once again, we've got the outer yoke right sides together with center back on our back panel. And then we have our inner yoke right side to wrong side. Now here's where we start to get into our technique that's really going to make it look pretty and enable us to turn a corner. I find it really helpful to have a self healing mat underneath when I'm working. So this little tiny one is perfect for this right now. Basically the technique is as followed. You're going to take a straight pin and you're going to put it exactly in to the corner of your outer yoke. Then that pin is going to go exactly into the corner of your back panel. And then thirdly into the corner of your inner yoke. And because I have this self healing mat, it's kind of nice and sticky to help me kind of pin down into the surface. You don't have to have a self healing mat, but I learned that that's much easier than just trying to use like the smooth surface of the table. And I don't really want to mark up my table and then push your three layers towards the table. These three edges here should be lining up. And once everything feels like it's lining up, I like to put my fingers on either side of the pin, pull the pin out, and then actually put the pin in the normal way and have it a little bit away from that corner because we're going to want to stitch right into that corner. So we want to have a little bit of room there. If you take your pin from it from this exact up and down position and then try to turn it and pin directly from that, sometimes it can kind of rock your three layers to where they're not even. So I suggest pulling the pin out and then putting it in at an angle. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'm putting my pin in exactly the corner of the outer yoke, the back panel, and the inner yoke. I'm sticking it lightly into the surface of my cutting mat and then pushing the three layers down. Now I'm just making sure that these three edges are lined up. 
I'm gonna put my fingers on either side of the pin, pull the pin out, and then put it in in my normal way of pinning just outside of this corner. So we've got each corner pinned and the center pinned. We're now gonna sew across this edge through all three layers. I'm going to start by exactly putting my needle down into that corner before I put my presser foot down. And I'm gonna stitch one stitch forward and one stitch backwards. I really wanna make sure that I don't veer off of that exact corner. I don't wanna go past that corner because then it's gonna mess up how pretty that corner gets turned. So you don't wanna go past it. That's why I kind of, I hand cranked my back stitch there. Now I can just stitch forward like normal. When I get to the end here, I wanna make sure that my last stitch hits right exactly on this corner, and then I'll do a couple back stitches. Again, you don't wanna go past the corner because that's gonna really mess up how pretty this is gonna turn right side out. and take it out of the machine. Now that we finished this first stitch, we're gonna clip towards this corner and we're only gonna be clipping into the back panel. So we're gonna go from the corner of the back panel towards that point. So you can see that I was just a little off on hitting my exact corner on my body of the, of the garment. I want to not clip towards where I was supposed to stitch. I want to clip towards exactly where I stitched. So this is where my stitch stopped here. And then that's where my corner is. So I want to clip into this fabric. I want to stop three or four stitches short just so that we don't accidentally create a hole there over time. I like using these old scissors because they're actually kind of blunt at the tip. So it keeps me from clipping too much. So I've stopped just a few stitches short of where that stitch actually ended. And I'll do the same for the other side. So this is where my stitch ended. And I'm just clipping into the back panel. If you accidentally clip some of the yoke, it's not so bad. We've now sewn across the center back. And the reason why we clipped this corner is because what we now wanna do is pivot this side kind of sleeve part here, pivot the yoke, and we're now gonna turn this corner and sew along this side. So now we can pay attention to these basting stitches. And what I like to do is just gather, grab those top threads and gather to the max on both sides. So this is the side where we're coming up the back panel and going over towards the front panel. Our shoulder seam is right here. Step one is take your outer yoke, find your notch and line that up with your shoulder seam. Then find your inner yoke and line up that notch and pin the three layers together. Now we'll use our pin method to line up this next corner.
Now we can adjust our gathering here based on how everything fits between our pins. The gauze is so wiggly. And now I can stitch between these two notches here. If you want, you can go ahead and set up your other side too so that you can sew both of them back to back. Also, I would recommend that when I first started sewing these, I would try to still be sitting at the sewing machine and laying all these pieces out and matching my corners and everything because I didn't want to stand up. But it makes such a difference to move over to a big table because it is kind of awkward how you've got your front pieces dangling and your back piece. So I definitely found it was worth it to take the extra moment to get up and set everything on my table. So let's do the other side. And you can start to see how this burrito method is coming into play. From this side, you're going to start in that corner again, but I discovered that it you have a lot better chances of success if you don't start exactly on where you stopped and maybe come over one stitch because it's really easy to kind of catch some fabric because there's extra bulk fabric here, right, from where we turned. And it's really easy to catch that and create a pleat. So my trick is to just stop a little bit short of actually completing that corner to guarantee that you don't catch that pleat. And I'm gonna do one stitch forward and one stitch back. And now we'll sew like normal at a half an inch. Here I'm going to finish exactly on my marked corner and then a back stitch. And once you sew this corner, you can quickly flip it out and check and see how everything looks. It's not the sharpest corner because I think the gauze just makes it really hard for that to be sharp, but I don't have any pleats, so I'm happy with that. If you did find that you had a pleat, you could turn this wrong side out again and try again or add a couple more stitches. Wow, that actually did the trick to make that sharper. Cool. Once you're happy with how this corner looks, you can trim some of the fullness out of here just by clipping the corner seam allowance here. This time we're gonna be starting at our new corner and going towards our old corner. As we get towards our old stitch, we're gonna stop just one stitch short of completing it, and then back stitch. Although I think I did just discover with the gauze that if you complete this corner, it looks sharper, but with the lawns and things, I would recommend not sewing all the way to the corner. But let's just see if my theory is correct. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something new every day. Okay, yeah, that looks great. I mean, it's a softer corner because of the gauze. And then of course, once I steam away that red line, it'll look much nicer. I'm happy with that. 
So let me clip my excess here. So we've got two corners done and we're ready to complete our second two corners. Again, we need to clip towards our stitch line. Wow, look at how off that is. That's all right. It'll be fine. Once again, we're gonna clip from this corner. Now I'm clipping into the front panel and I'm clipping towards where my stitch ended, not to where I was supposed to have ended, to where I actually ended. There we go. So the seam allowance would be a little off, but you won't notice it. Now we're going to pivot the front part of our yoke, the outer yoke, to meet our pleated side on the front panel. And because we clipped our front panel, this can rock forward. And we'll pin this corner into place. And this little pinning exercise here, if you've never seen something like this before, it's a nice technique to know about. If there's ever a project where you really wanna be accurate and land exactly on an edge, this is a good little technique to help you line up all your pieces or line up your pattern or whatever it is that your project involves. Okay, and let's do the other side. We're in full burrito mode now. Mmm, burrito. Now to sew our final two corners. Okay, that corner looks great. So I'm gonna clip my seam allowance and go to the other side. The most important thing is just that you don't go over your, your pivot point. If the second you go over, it's gonna start to pull in funny ways and you're not gonna get that pretty corner. So if you do accidentally go over, I would advise you to undo those stitches just so that you can make this as crisp as you possibly can. Clip that excess seam allowance. So by the time you finish, pretty much your whole garment is inside of the yoke. And now you get to do the fun thing and turn it all out to the right side and see your results for all your hard work. Doesn't that look great? And not only is this beautifully finished on the outside, but take a look at the inside. Equally as beautiful. If you have any basting stitches or gathering stitches that are showing, you can go ahead and pull those out and then we'll give this all a good press. There's one last corner that we need to clip, which is just from this corner on the front panel towards the tip of where our stitch ended. That way the shawl collar can move out of the way and then we can run a stay stitch connecting the two yoke pieces together around the neckline and then this will also help hold in the neck and control the stretching along the bias here while we attach our shawl collar. You do have a pleat that's ending right here and it might be in your way a little bit when you go to clip that and just do your best to avoid it, but it's totally okay that the end of your pleat is kind of landing right in this corner. It might even go over a little bit, but it shouldn't interfere with us attaching the shawl collar. You didn't do anything wrong if you see that like that. So when we stay stitch this, we'll just make sure to get this little 
bit of the shawl collar out of the way. So you're just sewing into the two yokes. And sew this at less than your seam allowance, so a quarter inch to a three eighths of an inch should be fine. Our stay stitching around the neck is done, the yoke is done. Now we're going to connect the front panel together. You're gonna sew the center front one and three quarters of an inch away from the center front line. And that's far enough away that I find it helpful to just mark the stitch line. That's also what this notch is, got, is giving you a guide to is one and three quarter inch for this stitch. And then I give you a suggested guide for where to stop, which is 17 and a half inches up from your cut edge at the bottom. And this is giving you a suggestion, but then we're gonna try the garment on and you can determine exactly where you want this V-neck to hit. I'm gonna end with the back stitch here. Now to press the seam open and try it on. So I pinned the garment underneath the armpit while it was still on the table right sides together so that I could try this on and kind of see actually where the V-neck is gonna hit. And it looks pretty great. You know, of course I designed this pattern, so. <laughs> Of course, I have it hit where I want to. But depending on what you want, you can just lengthen this line or take this down and just make sure that you end with a back stitch wherever this stitch ends up. It's looking cute though, isn't it? Maybe without the shirt underneath it. The next step is going to be surging or finishing the raw edge of this center front on either side. And you only need to deal with it up just to the base of the yoke. So like for this serge, I just made sure to go a little past the yoke because then the way we're gonna finish this is this is gonna be turned under and finished here. So from here up, we're gonna securely finish this, but then it's gonna hang free from here down. So you need to find some way to finish this edge. On some of my more sheer and delicate garments, I felt like the serge was a little aggressive. So what I did was I actually just turned this under and then just straight stitched it down. So it's like still like a little raw and it's kind of more of the way that you would see people finish edges on home garments, you know, in the last generation. But I thought it just seemed a little bit nicer. And especially like if you can kind of see the serge through the front edge, you might want to do something more delicate like that. Or if you cut this on the selvage edge, then you can just leave the selvage. Next, we're going to close the end of the shawl collar, which is like the top of the center front. And it is intentional that I have this little bit of a zigzag here. This is a subtle zigzag to just try to help encourage the shawl collar to sit closer towards the neck instead of it being straight across. But if you cut it straight across, that's fine too. Otherwise, just follow that subtle zigzag. First, we're gonna press the seam we just sewed open. To give you an idea of where we're going, the shawl collar has been closed, we pressed this, and then what we're gonna do is Right sides are gonna get sewn together for the shawl collar here. Then it's gonna be folded towards the inside and gonna be completely encasing the neckline here. But before we do that, we wanna put interfacing in here to strengthen this collar. This was the part I was most anxious to film because it was so tricky to even try to draw this. So the first thing that we're gonna do 
And this is gonna benefit from a tailor's ham since we're really in a three-dimensional mode now with our garment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our shawl collar perfectly in half and press. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the halfway line. This is ultimately where the collar is gonna fold. And we wanna find this crease so that then we know where to put our interfacing. If you cut your center front on the selvage and you removed 3 eighths of an inch, this will be offset by 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, just to double check myself, this side is gonna be the right side that's gonna be on the outside. This is the wrong side. So this is the side that we want the interfacing to go on. This side right here where the pin is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my interfacing and fold it in half and find the center. Now I can line up the center with the center back of the shawl collar. I'm on the inside, what will be the inside of the shawl collar. Let me take this pin out. And I'm lining up along that creased edge that we made with the iron. And your interfacing should kind of go to the base of the yoke. For this pattern, I didn't really go the traditional route of working with uh, testers, but I did teach a class to six students who were kind of, they became my beta testers, except for that they were sewing it in front of me. And actually in that class was when we figured out how to best press this as accurately as possible. So I was super appreciative of those folks that were willing to take that class and we just had a great time. Now we can take the remaining seam allowance here and fold it back over the edge of that interfacing. If you use the selvage edge of the fabric and took away 3 eighths of an inch, this interfacing is going to come right to that selvage edge. Now that our interfacing is all prepped, we are going to sew this side of the shawl collar, the side further away from the interfacing, to the right side of the neckline of our two yoke pieces. So the center back seam here lines up with our center back notch, the top of our yokes. And then everything else should line up all the way down to the base of the yoke in the front. So when you clipped that front panel right there at the shawl collar, you should clip it enough to where nothing is being pleated or gathered here and everything is sitting flat. And then that's gonna be where we start and stop our stitches with a good back stitch. The final step for finishing the shawl collar is this pre-folded edge. We're gonna take this and it's gonna come down. And because we folded this at 3 eighths of an inch and we sewed this at half an inch, it should overlap by 1 eighth of an inch. And also having that interfacing in there is making it really easy. You can kind of just fold it on the interfacing. This fabric is so soft that I don't feel like I need to do a press here before I start pinning all of this, but you might wanna press this edge before you actually start pinning. And then when I pin, I'm going to make sure my pins are gonna be placed on the right side because ultimately the next step is, is I'm gonna be stitching in the ditch along here to catch this fold. If you don't wanna do that, you can hand finish this 
but this is a casual enough shirt. I'm gonna, well, I always say that I might hand finish it and I never do. I always end up stitching <laughs> in the ditch. So your call about what you would prefer to do in terms of finishing this edge. If you are stitching in the ditch, you're just gonna start right at the bottom of the yoke with a quick front and back stitch. This fabric's so soft, I don't even feel like I need to pin it. We'll see if I regret that later. I also find that if I just use my fingers to just roll the seam back just a touch, it can really help me get right actually in the ditch. And by ditch, I mean our seam. Could I take two seconds and actually pin this? Yes. I love not pinning. <laughs> we'll see if I regret it when I finish. and finish with a back stitch at the base of the other side of the yoke. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> Almost, okay. So I missed this spot right here. So I'm just gonna seam rip just a little past both sides and redo that little section. When I redo stitches like this, I don't do back stitches. I just start, you know, like an inch or two over the old stitch. And then finish an inch or two past the old stitch. Much better. So see, you don't have to be perfect the first time. Just wanna make sure that all of this is caught. While you're at the machine, you can also go ahead and bar tack at the top of your V-neck here. I found that with my first samples where I didn't like reinforce this stitch, it started to fray right here, especially after washing it several times. And this fabric, this gauze is such an open weave that it already seems like it's like tearing a little bit. So I definitely wanna make sure that I do a nice stitch. If you want, you can do just a really tiny back and forth stitch here to make it as minimal as possible. Or you could stitch all the way across here and it'll help further hold down kind of this fold back piece here. Maybe I'll do a square since there's all these squares on the garment. Whatever you do, just make sure that you're going back and forth and stitching a couple times right at the base of your V-neck. Now you can give your collar a good pressing and we're gonna move on to hemming. First thing you're gonna do with your hem facing is you're gonna turn this inner edge back a little bit. You're not gonna be able to do a full half inch because kind of the bigger a fold back you try to do on a curve like this, the harder it is. So I would do something somewhere between a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. It's not a huge deal what you do. See, I'm not even measuring this or anything. You are sort of breaching some bias here. So, um, you know, this fabric, this gauze is really limp, but if you have a stiffer fabric, this might kind of not want to sit flat. So what you can do is you can hover it, you can hover the iron and hit it with steam and then kind of use your hand to help make sure that it's keeping its position and it's sitting flat. You could also use a clapper of some sort to kind of help you hold it until it cools down. The flatter this is, the easier it's going to be to sew it later. And just FYI, this is not a clapper. This is a prototype piece of wood from an art piece and it's just a flat piece of wood. So it works. I'll go ahead and do the second piece while I'm here. Now,
now to pin our hem facing to the bottom of our hem. If you haven't found the center of your hem facing, go ahead and find center back. And if you haven't found the bottom center of your panel, go ahead and mark that so that you have a point of reference to match these two pieces up. And then the notches on both sides will match up. You're gonna be sewing from the notch at a half an inch around this curve all the way to the notch here. So right here and you're gonna start and stop with a back stitch. Starting at the notch, you're gonna clip to just shy of the top of your stitch and then you're gonna trim down the seam allowance here so that it'll be easier to turn this curve. Conversely, you can clip the curve. I just always prefer to do this because I feel like sometimes when you clip the curve, you can kind of see sort of the sawtooth results through the fabric. So I just like to narrow it like this. Honestly, this gauze fabric is so limp that I might even be able to turn this without any problem, but definitely with any kind of more stable fabric, you're gonna need to do this. The hem facing is going to be turned to the inside of the garment. I find it makes it easier if I try to press the seam open first before I try to press it to one side. The curve makes this job a little bit more difficult, but let's see how well I can do. For the first few prototypes of this shirt, I sewed the side seams first before I did this hem facing, and then I found it was so much easier to do it while the shirt's still open. I'm also making sure that I roll the seam just a little bit to the inside so that you don't see that seam on the outside at all. So it's just being rolled in just a smidge. Again, you wanna be careful about not jerking this around too much because it's on the bias. So I try to use light fingers, get it to where I want it to be. See, there's a little bit of bubbling here, but if I hover the, the iron and just steam it a little bit, I can kind of then kind of shrink it into place. And then you should have clipped this enough that these pieces can now flip out like that. Now we just need to sew along this folded edge to secure down our hem facing. And I know that my stitches look better if I was to sew it from the right side, but my ability to actually be able to get close to this edge is gonna be really difficult if I can't see it. So I decided that I just like sewing this from the wrong side. One thing I will do is I will tighten my upper thread tension to try to pull my bobbin thread up a little bit and hopefully make the stitch look prettier. I also just realized that my bobbin thread is a different shade of green, so I might want to rectify that. Watch how lazy I'm about to be. Literally the laziest thing I've ever done. 
We're going to start this stitch sort of parallel to where this notch is, and I'm not gonna do a back stitch because I'm gonna come back and pick up this stitch. And whenever I kind of overlap stitching like that, I don't feel the need to do a back stitch because the overlap will sort of protect the end of each stitch. Um, do whatever you wanna do. I also just like to do that because it keeps um, it from being as bulky, you know, as soon as you do a back stitch. When you get to sewing the hem facing to the center front, it's important that you stitch this open and then this is gonna help keep this flat and in place without having to actually stitch all of this. When I first started designing this garment, I tried to figure out like how to like fold this and then completely stitch this, but ultimately it got tricky where you started to have shaping here and it, I honestly just didn't really like the look of the top stitching on the right side. I mean, especially with like a limp fabric like this, I probably could fold this down and stitch this. So if that was something that you wanted to play with, you certainly could. It is nice how it may, would make it a completely clean garment. Um, but I just found with certain fabrics, this was just like too difficult to have sit flat. Once both your hem facings are completed, you can now close up your side seams. With right sides together, line up front to back, starting and ending with a back stitch, and then match up your notches as you go along. If you did want to finish everything with French seams, make sure to start with wrong sides together for this part. When you get to the bottom, make sure to avoid these hem facing flaps on the front and the back. You just want to be sewing the front and back panel. And you want to shoot right to that little corner right there. Now I can finish these raw edges with a serge. I'm pressing the side seams open now with the help of my sleeve board. I feel like I didn't have a sleeve board for a long time and now I use it so often that I don't really understand how I lived without it. <laughs> So all we're going to do here is we're just going to press this back on both sides, kind of like it looks like it's sewn. And if you really wanted to, you could go back to the machine and sew this shut if you want, but it's so short that this also works too. So I just pressed those two raw edges in and then I'm going to press this top edge in. And now we just need to go to the machine and secure this down. Again, I'm gonna sew this from the wrong side and I'm just gonna go back and sew over like an inch of my old stitch here. 
and then go around this whole area. I might also do a back stitch right there between the two layers. I'm also going to do a second row of stitching to catch this little, you know, top of the slit. So I'm just going to do another parallel stitch that's hitting right there. And then I'm going to give this a really good two back stitches, I think, and then go all the way to the end. So see, it doesn't really matter that that's not like properly stitched because it's all secured. The final step is to hem our sleeve. And the way that I like to do this is I like to turn in this edge a quarter inch to a three eighths of an inch, you know, narrow looks nice. I'm just eyeballing this. Usually at this point, I'm like tired. I'm ready to be done. I'm anxious to try it on. I'll just press this once by the iron, and then when we go to the machine, I'll fold it over a second time. Now I'm gonna give this its second fold. And I, I'm again gonna sew from the wrong side because I just find it to be so much easier. I'm so close to being out of bobbin thread. Let's see if I can make it to the end. <laughs> nope. Dang it. What's left is to give my final seams a good press and then we're ready for the reveal. Thanks so much, y'all. Happy sewing. Mwah.